Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jock here from Awareness in Action. I am delighted today to have James Mulvaney of podcast.co. And today we're going to be talking about podcasting, the meteoric rise of podcasting, how he got started, where he sees podcasting going in the next God knows how many years, and what got him into this side of things and how successful uh, he has actually been with this new service. And I have to let you know, guys, I have used many services and I jumped straight into podcast.co. And uh, if you are looking to develop your brand, your message, your business, your coaching, then podcasting is certainly going to be the way to go for the next many years. And today we have that expert. James, how are you doing? Thanks, Jock. Yeah, what an introduction. <laughs> I'm doing really well, thanks. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, I kind of practice it a little bit. No, I'm only joking. I want not stand in front of my mirror. <laughs> so I'm going to do it. Red leather, yellow leather, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so listen, tell us a little bit about you, because I know that you're kind of a serial entrepreneur, James. Um, you've been involved in many different things. In, in the past, yeah, and I mean, podcast.co has taken the industry by storm. But <laughs> what is it about you that makes you unique for this? Well, I've been I've been basically running businesses since I finished school, since I was like sixteen years old, uh, in one form or another. Um, I got involved in the radio industry initially because I wanted to go out and be a DJ. Uh, Love music. Always used to listen to the radio when I was growing up. So I started doing that, getting a bit of experience, you know, working for local radio stations, decided that um, rather than going into the industry, I was going to build a, a business service in the industry because I kind of thought, you know, if I go into radio as a DJ, the chances of you making it big, like proper big scale, very, very slim, you know, you know, it doesn't happen to very many people. Um, so but but I learned enough about, you know, I basically learn their rap, learn what, you know, what kind of wants and needs of the, the industry was. So I created a company called Wave Streaming. Um, this was back in 2004, wow. I was about 17 at the time, and, and just started selling streaming media services to the industry. And, and really, when I started out, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I kind of uh, I didn't know anything about servers or technology. I just sort of I just about learned to build a website. And I kind of found a guy uh, in Australia who, who knew about the servers. So I kind of worked with him and actually the, the technical side of that stuff to make sure we could actually deliver what we were selling. Um, and then kind of, you know, over the next few years, I went off to university. I, I kind of mastered my craft a bit more, you know, found out I, I did a degree in um, interactive multimedia, which was web design and development. Um, and then probably about five years ago now, I launched a, another business in, in the same industry called radio.co. That's done really well. We've got about 5,000 clients now. And, and more recently, probably just over a year ago, we, we decided to, um, well, before that, but we launched podcast.co a year ago, probably about two years ago, we thought, let's go into the podcasting space because it seems uh, like a logical next step for us as a business. You know, we, we're already in the audio space. We've got a lot of pedigree in that area. Um, yeah. But podcasting and radio are very different mediums. There is some crossover between obviously the two client bases. But, you know, I think podcasting is um, has got much more of a broad appeal, especially people who are looking to start podcasts. Uh, everyone likes listening to the radio, but not very many people want to start radio stations. But there's more and more people just like you, I guess, who are now looking turning to podcasting as another way of you know communicating with their clients, attracting new business, telling their story um, or, or just doing it for fun as well. You know, it's, it's interesting because I had, a, I had a talk yesterday and I'm going to give it a shout out to my, my man, Ben Nielsen at Sweetwater. I, I remember, you know, I watched a video of you guys talking about different microphones and I went and, and bought this uh, Aston Stealth because yeah. you guys were raving about it. And I, I like the look of it. And so I bought it from Sweetwater and those guys were amazing. So Ben, big shout out to you for looking after this. These guys... Any equipment that you need, especially here in the US, um, these guys are brilliant. I, I had a phone call from them and everything else, but I was talking to Ben, and before he phoned me up and says, "How are you doing?" You know that service is amazing. Yeah, where they phone you and say, "How are you getting on with the, the mic?" You know, what else can I help you with? I mean, they were just outstanding. But we got talking about podcasting, and this is where I'm leading into. And Ben yeah. and I were talking. He was talking about the kind of the rise and fall of radio because it seems now that many, many people are turning more to podcasting than they do in radio. And 
I don't know if there is, is if that crossover. I know I know you say there's a little bit of a synergy, but do yeah. you think that that gap is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger? I don't know. I mean, everyone keep, keeps saying it happened for the last 30, 40, 50 years that, oh, radio's, you know, the, the video is going to be the death of radio. The internet's going to be the death of radio. Podcasts are going to be the death of radio. And it's still managed to hold its own. And what I found really interesting, you know, uh, because obviously we can see our network wide stats for both platforms. When I look at our clients on for radio.co, especially during lockdown, um, so March, April, May, we saw a drastic increase in number of listeners tuning in across the board. Podcasts have stayed about the same. And I think perhaps the difference well, is yeah. people in lockdown, they want to have that you know, personal connection. They like the idea. You want to tune into a radio station because you know there's someone there at the other end of the line. Whereas podcasts, perhaps people listen to them when they're driving to work, which they're obviously not doing at the moment, or they might be in the gym, <laughs> which they're not doing at the moment. So I think maybe that's why... Um, you know, we've not seen the same hike than in listeners on the podcast side of things we have on radio. I think they are um, both here to stay. I think they're both two different mediums. I think uh, podcasting feels a bit like an evolution of radio in some respects, but of course, it's very hard to put music out on podcasts. The record industry are, yeah. s- are not happy about the fact that people play or try and play music in podcasts. We actually have um, sometimes we get automated takedown requests from different uh, royalty collection organizations on podcasts because they're the record industry really don't like the idea that you know you're downloading their music onto your computer and stuff like this so i still think radio has its purpose for yeah. the music side of things but podcast for spoken word is fantastic and it's really easy for anyone to get into you know you don't have to spend a lot of time recording no. episodes you know you could you could devote an hour or a, half an hour a week to recording an episode and and and, and of course it's you know you'll know this is someone who works in the content industry if you yeah, can record yeah. the video as well as the audio, you know, you have a kind of huge uh, opportunity to repurpose that content and use it across very many different platforms. Brings me to this yes. question. Nice segue that there. Absolutely. Nice segue into yeah. this. And and this is even for me, this is this is this is confusing. I'm like, right, do I really want to put an a video out of the audio interview that I've done? Or even me speaking, because let's face it, podcasts are more about education and talks, right? as you said, yeah. right? And I got into it through my book, you know, shameless plug for my book. I wrote Deadly Departed on my other side of things. Okay, mm-hmm. got to get the shameless plug in there. But um, what I found is that there's two different audiences, right? And so many people yeah. are thinking, all right, so there's half the camp says have your podcast totally separate from your video and have it as a different thing, a different kind of content, mm-hmm. and then have your video as something completely separate. But you're kind of, it sounds like you're you're championing the idea of have your podcast and your video together, and you've got two different things. Because, yeah, in the content industry, I try to put my clients, you know, let's, let's you know, entrepreneurs or in marketing, mm-hmm. there's a di- di- different demographic that's listening to podcasts than there is videos. Yeah. So where is the crossover? Why why do you think one you should have it the way that you see it? Interesting, because yeah, today I was literally this morning recording a video about use making video when you're doing a podcast episode. Like right now, we're recording our cameras, and it's just our webcams. It's not particularly yeah. hi-fi no. production values. I think, you know, you can take the audio out. Yes, you can submit that to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, et cetera. And and some people will like to listen to podcasts. That's the benefit of podcasts is you can listen to them, digest them passively when you're driving or, you know, in the gym or on public transport. Well, I've got a face for radio. Yeah, but I think um, (laughs) there is a good argument to record the video because, you know, you can upload it as a full episode to YouTube. Some people actually like to listen to podcasts on YouTube. It's just their habit. That's where they'd go to find their podcast. So if you're not on YouTube, you could be missing out on some audience. Um, I think more importantly, when you're recording these style interviews, you can take out the golden nuggets of information, trim them down into sort of 30 to one minute clips, put them on Instagram, use them for story content, use them on LinkedIn. And, you know, it's a good way of just kind of generating content without putting in the extra work. Or if you want to be really fancy, and I I did this for the first series season of my podcast, you record each episode and then you record a video sort of teasing what's coming up in that episode. If you've, if you've got the time to commit to it, that's another thing you could do, you know, almost a trailer, a video trailer for that podcast. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, I, I think podcast uh, as, a, as a marketer, it's a great way of repurposing content. Again, you can extract the audio, turn that into text using AI, 
which is really fancy, but um, not yeah, always and perfect. Then you've, got con- you've got written content Absolutely. that can actually be found in the search results. Yeah, quotes that you could post on Twitter, yeah. all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, I think that's what I gets me excited about podcasts as a marketer anyway. I, I want to just jump back into this before because we're going to talk about how to set up a podcast and, yep. and how easy it is. And, and you've got an awesome starters course, which I checked out. I mean, I've done podcasting for a little bit, but your course I'm going to recommend to anybody. But... Um, now, you guys, you know, you were in Radio Court. Was, it was really, you know, you're successful with it. Mm. But you didn't just sit there one day and thought, yeah, this is just the next step. Let's get into podcasting. There must have been something about going into podcasting that really attracted you. Did you actually see an upsurge in it? Um, I mean, I know that we've got a lot of uh, celebrities that are now turning to it. But what mm. was it that you said? What was it that sparked you guys as a team that, yeah, look, this is where it's going to go and we need to be in there? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, we had um, we ran a content and radio project here in Manchester for a couple of years called MCR Live. As part of that, we were producing a few different podcasts um, and also doing a lot of radio content as well. So we were kind of already experienced in creating podcasts. We then had a lot of clients who were saying to us, you know, are you guys going to build in podcasting onto the platform? So that was initially we thought, OK, we could build in a sort of like an add on for radio.co, which is for existing customers. But the more we looked at the market sort of in 2017, we thought, you know, this is growing quick. It's a high growth area. That was around the stage that we were starting to see, as you just mentioned, you know, a few celebrities jumping on the bandwagon, which I think has driven up the kind of general knowledge. You know, like if you went up to someone five years ago and said, what's a pub? What's a podcast? Someone in the street. You know, you might get half, half, half people say, yes, I know what that is. But nowadays, I think most people are aware of what they are. And that's partly driven by, you know, um, celebrities coming on board, um, lots and lots of brands as well producing podcasts. So it's kind of it's become a mainstream form of media, not something that was just reserved for like enthusiasts as it was maybe five to ten years ago. Yeah. Do you think there's a do you think there's a different demographic between the two? Uh, no. Uh, what in terms of people listening? Yeah, yeah. Because because I'll give you an example. For instance, I have a I have a I do coaching and I I, I yeah. help coaches understand the market and industry. I help them to understand things. And there's one client I have, and I'm getting her set up with with her own podcast and mm. we're developing that kind of thing. And one of the things I've said to her is like, it, there is there's a different demographic that's going to be listening to you from. Yeah, you can do your marketing on LinkedIn. You can do your marketing on Instagram and all these kind of things, but there is going to be a different niche of people that will listen to you on a podcast. And so you need to reach those. This is a new demographic that you're going to reach. Do you think that's a fair assumption? I think, yeah. I mean, of course, each platform has its own sort of chunk of the market, if you like. For example, TikTok is very young at the moment, but then Mm -hmm. they've been saying that a lot of older people have been getting into TikTok and, and watching TikTok videos now. So... I think um, you know every, every 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 platform has you know a, a broad range of different age groups um, and, and sort of locations and etc. Et listening, I think um, certainly what's noticeable is in the USA it's far further, much further ahead than say for example here in the UK. We're still not as widely adopted in podcasting in the UK as in as it is in America, but um, you know I think it's that ultimately it's a, it's, a, it's a it's accessible by anyone. So. I don't think it's kind of fair to say, you know, you can just expect young people to be listening because that's not the case. You know, it, it, no. statistics have proven. I don't have them off the top of my head. I wish I did. Um, you know, but statistics are there to show that. You we, know, do, we don't want to bore people with statistics. There are people to listen to podcasts in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, yeah. 70s. It, you know, it, it really, it, it's not like an age thing. But I think um, I think the majority of people are, say, aged between like, 28 and sort of 44-ish, something like that. I think that's the, the, where the, the big chunk of the market is. So yeah, not, not very young and not very old, basically. My wife and I have kind of been, you know, we'd be sitting in a restaurant and stuff like that. You get talking to the people or you get talking to, you know, not so much now with COVID, but before. Mm-hmm. And I have even have the servers and they'd say, oh, yeah, you know, what do you do? And then you get to talk about maybe the podcast. And, and I've had people say, oh, yeah, give me your details. And they take out their notebook and they say, oh, I really like listening to podcasts, you know. And yeah. so I'll tell them my two different podcasts, which are two vastly different ones, but they take it down because they seem to think this is a good pastime. Um, yeah. You know, they like to listen to it where they're working or that kind of stuff, you know. So it's definitely, uh, it's a diverse number of people that are looking at it from young to the old and, and the more and more getting into it. 
So, now, it's yeah. very easy. You mentioned earlier on, it's very easy to set up. So essentially, mm -hmm. somebody who is interested in doing their own podcast, what, what, what is it they really need? What is it that you say is the minimum thing that they really need to get started? You know what, Jock? I think a lot of people get bogged down with the technical side of things. Um, and, yeah. and, and that's always, or they just they sort of sit there and dwell on it for too long rather than actually just starting. And actually, I don't think it's too difficult to start. I think, you know, the main things you need, I always recommend to everyone, just buy a decent microphone. You don't need to go out and spend a fortune. You can spend 50, 100 bucks. Get something that will sat, make you sound 10 times better. Um, if you yeah. just rely on the built-in mic on your computer or your iPhone, it's never going to sound very good. So, you know, especially if you're doing it for, for business, you want to try and put your best foot forward. You want to try and sound professional. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is just get started. Um, try and plan out season one. Think about who your audience is actually going to be. Don't just sort of sit there and record for the sake of it, but actually consider, you know, what is your audience um, what do they want to get out of this and kind of like figure out the why, you know, why do you want to actually create a podcast? Once you've uh, answered those questions, you know, then start planning your content and don't just think, right, okay, I've got episode one and two done. Try and think, right, let's, let's look at this as a season one. Cause again, I think it's quite daunting for some people to think, oh, well, I've got to commit to doing one episode every week for the whole year. Um, that's going to be too much of a time suck. So you don't have to do that. You could say commit to doing six, eight um, your episodes for your first season and then reevaluate and maybe go into a second season a month or two later. And of course, you can reiterate and you can make it better each time. So don't worry too much if it's not perfect the first time around or if you don't yeah. quite hit that sweet spot in, for your audience. You know. Also, um, finally, I think it's important that you actually try and engage with people, have conversations with people who are listening, figure out a way to get people actually involved in the conversation. I think that's really powerful, too. Yeah, do you know, it, it is because I there's a lot of the times where I don't do a lot of interviews and now I'm doing it more because I want to engage with more people. I want yeah. to get them. And one of the things I'm going to be doing, uh, which will probably be a new season, is I'm going to be starting to interview readers of my book. Okay, yes. And so I I want to get that audience engaged yeah. with it. But there's there's another thing I want to go into because, I, you know, when I started, I was, I was trying to get you know, John Loomer, I was trying to study your know, Facebook ads for it and all that kind of stuff. And you do get bogged down with should yeah. I promote it? How do I get it on iTunes? What do I do? Hmm. And I know that your platform has a really amazing way of doing it, but what's a tip that you can give somebody? Because there's a lot of people say, well, do I publish my first, you know, my first episode straight away? Do I wait until I've got like 10 episodes, five episodes? Hmm. What do you suggest, James? Well, I think it's good to be organized. You know, I think if you're doing it episode by episode, kind of living on that edge, it can become quite annoying and daunting. So I think try and have a buffer of a couple of weeks you know, um, especially if you're booking guests on, sometimes they don't show up. Sometimes people have to reschedule. You know, there's always going to be ifs and buts. Um, so, you know, if you're working ahead of time by a couple of weeks at least or a month, you know, it just gives you that buffer. It's like anything, you know, if you're going, if you creating content, for example, you might look at your uh, marketing for the next month or two months and think, okay, what topics are we going to be posting about? Or, um, you know, what social media posts are we going to be creating? You know, you need to try and be organized especially if you as i say you're doing it for, for business treat your podcast just like any other project it needs to be project managed to a certain degree yeah, um absolutely. You know, yeah. use tools like trello or even just a basic level just a spreadsheet or something just to kind of make sure you kind of you've got your ducks in a row and uh you know the the, the things aren't going to sort of start stressing you out if you kind of miss an episode and you've got an amazing video i what i watched the tutorial you've got an amazing video which we will link down in comments and in the show notes well, it actually shows them how to do that and yeah. book yeah, absolutely. people. And you, and you talk about Matchmaker FM, which I have to say, right, Yeah, I have probably had more interest from Matchmaker FM with people than any other platform I've had. Good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> phenomenal. I yeah. mean, normally you put something up, you put a podcast up, you, you know, either people want to interview you or they don't, or, and it, it can be once in a blue moon, but it's since being on Matchmaker, which we'll talk about that later as well, mm. um, it's inundated. Every day I have requests for people want to be on my show or I have requests for people want to interview me. So, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. The best platform that I have came across out there. Um, so, listen, yeah. the other thing is, a lot of people, there's a, there's, there's a lot of people get into it. They want to rank well, right? They, mm -hmm. We'll talk about the marketing side of it, things in a minute, but they want to get the podcast up there and found in the directories. I know that you have that that, that service, but yeah. um, there's there's some podcast uh, entrepreneurs that will say, 
put your first five or six episodes out so that you rank higher straight away? Do you think that's viable or just get it out and get it done there? Just just keep going with it, play with it. I think just try and release according to a consistent schedule. Yeah. You know, um, even if it's just for the first series, you know, if you're going to commit to saying doing one episode a week, make sure you do one episode a week every Thursday or whatever it might be, or try and do one episode every other week, uh, you know, on a Monday, but just try and be consistent. Um, don't kind of sort of do sporadically when you feel like it, just try and, and be professional about it, be consistent, even if it is just for sort of the first eight, eight episodes and you have a break. Um, you know, when people say there's, there's lots of all this kind of well, how do you trick the algorithm and all this kind of stuff, I'd say stay away from anyone who claims to be a podcast promoter. There's a lot of people, most of all, yeah. most of which are based in, you know, offshore, wherever it might be, saying, oh, I'll promote your, promote your podcast. Yeah. I think ultimately it's, um, it's a load of rubbish. They'll probably take your money and not very much will happen. But uh, ultimately, you know, it's a, it's kind of against Apple and Google and all these companies' best interests. It's just yeah. like SEO. It's the same sort of, sort of thing. So I think, you know, you want to just be making sure that you're putting effort into thinking about the title of each episode, trying to think what kind of keywords people might be searching for. Again, it goes back to understanding your audience to begin with and thinking yeah, about yeah, their absolutely. wants and needs. You know, what questions are you answering that they might have? Um I think as well, discoverability of podcasts has traditionally always been an issue. Um, companies like Google are, th are kind of going to be solving this. And I think they're sort of already making headway there in that, you know, they're not just looking at what it says on the title and the description, but they're actually understanding what is said within the episode, you know, using their... And I believe they're also starting to try and look at geo-targeting where yeah. the podcast's coming from. Yeah. Because absolutely. that's been a big issue, I find, as well. Mm. Yeah, which, I mean, which is also a nice segue into the business and the marketing side of things. Do you think it's a, a powerful medium for a small business? Absolutely, yeah, because I mean, a lot of people are very fixated with, oh, I need a 10,000 listeners an episode. If you're a small business, mm. and I, I saw this, I read this on one actually, one of our own blog posts. It's not my quote, but I thought this was a perfect way of summing it up. If you run a small business and you've got the opportunity to go and speak in, every single week in front of 50 to 100 people in, say, a town square or a town hall or whatever, and tell them about your business, everyone would jump at that opportunity. So, you know, if your podcast only oh, attracts yeah. a few hundred people and you, you've, got, you've got their attention for 20 minutes, you can tell them about what your latest developments are. You can tell them about how you can help them. It's just a really a good way of communicating. And the good thing about podcasts versus things like YouTube videos or Facebook videos is it's proven that 75% of people actually tune in for the whole episode. And it's very rare as, as entrepreneurs that we have people's attention for that amount of time, whether it be 20 minutes or 30 minutes, et cetera. I, I, and another thing I think, another benefit, James, is that it's it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week advertising for you, isn't it, really, yeah, when you think exactly. about it? Yeah. And that's what I've tried to hammer into some of my marketing clients and even some of the clients that I coach. I'm like, mm -hmm. don't be shy about it because when you've done that first episode, you're going to get better and better and better. And then think about that podcast episode is up there for people to listen to 24 hours a day, seven days a week that you can continually promote. Yes. Where in God's earth do you actually get advertising for that cheap? <laughs> well, yeah. And and as well, it's not, you know, especially, um, I mean, we'll, we'll get on to guest, guest gigging as well in a bit, but you know, if you're appearing as a guest on other people's podcasts, you know, it's, you're exposing yourself to audiences who otherwise would have absolutely no idea who you were. And it's only for kind of committing what an hour of your time just to speak to someone and record an episode. It's not, you know, when when how if you normally spent an hour, what would you be able to accomplish in an hour? Well, maybe writing a blog post, but then how many people will see that blog post is not guaranteed, is it? But this is the thing. I think this it's incredibly powerful as a marketing tool. And um, going back to the kind of business side of stuff, my advice really is if you're doing it as a marketing exercise, either to try and draw in new customers or to educate your existing customers try and form some kind of trackable link so you can kind of measure your KPI. So it might be at the end of every episode, you yeah. have a call to action that says, go to this link and try and make it something that's easy to people because obviously people are listening so they can just type it out into the browser, just register. It could be a short little domain name that you have and you know have some kind of free giveaway or some kind of just a call to action so you can start seeing, okay, all of these people have come in just through the podcast and you know that section of your your audience or um, your kind of your prospects have, have just come through the podcast. It kind of think about how you're actually going to measure the success of it as, uh, in terms of KPIs. Do you know what? It, it, that's something a lot of people forget about. Yeah. I see a lot of podcasts where they haven't got any 
Uh, they haven't got any call to action. I mean, they'll they'll just say on the podcast, you know, if you want to talk to me, talk to me. But they yeah. don't give, they don't give you any Instagram handles or anything, yeah. and then they you know they expect people to go to that. So that's that's a, that's a very very good tip because it's a very powerful medium for small businesses. Mm. Um, in terms of content, though, a lot of people have, have got you know I I find and I get this all the time. You know, when I try to say, no, think about doing a podcast. Mm. They think, well, what, what what can I say? What can I talk about? How do I come up with content regularly? What 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 advice do you give someone who's worried about the content aspect of it? Well, there's two ways you can approach it. First of all, I would say just write down ten questions that come up regularly when on pre-sales inquiries, for example. You know, if you're a business and, and customers are asking, well, what what about this? And just literally break it down, say 10, 10 common questions. Just treat it like an FAQ. And each episode is one of the one of those questions, and you go into a bit of detail and discuss the answer. Um, another way, of course, is just like we're doing now, is to actually rely on other people to come on as experts and, and kind of impart their knowledge. Um, you know, make sure that they're obviously not always going to have to, you don't have to interview a direct competition, but find people who, you know, offer complementary products and services who, um, you know, will be able to, to, to help educate your, your audience. You know, those are two really straightforward strategies. It doesn't take a lot of time to kind of, most people know their markets or know their business inside out anyway. Yeah. It's just about breaking it down into sort of manageable chunks and make each each episode about a specific topic, you know. And you also obviously there has to be some kind of passion for it because I, I, yeah. I kind of feel like if you're <laughs> if you're doing a podcast just for the sake of marketing your business and you don't have really passion for it, it's not going to have legs on it. You know, there, there has to be a level of passion to get your message out and to, to believe in what you're doing. Absolutely. And, and again, you know, it doesn't matter if what you're doing is super niche. It's really funny because obviously, you know, we have thousands of podcasts on our platform. A couple of the the weirdest ones I've seen, there was one which was specifically talking about batteries. OK, and, and just all about batteries. <laughs> and, you know, fair enough. That's the we're expert. Obviously, you know, you've got to be really passionate like about batteries. Bad. Believe it's it or not, there are people bad. out there. Who, and there was also one about um, some kind of like reflective film that you can apply to your windows you know if you've got like a building in a really hot desert or whatever you can apply that kind of that sort of film that reflects the sunlight or put it in oh a yeah, 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 yeah. yeah there was a, there was a podcast specifically about that so um you know believe it or not i couldn't really believe it when i found these podcasts but they, they were on a network and uh believe it or you not it sounds like i'm making this up but this is 100 percent true um, so <laughs> it just goes to show it doesn't matter how you know niche your product or service is there is going to be people who want to listen to it out there. And uh, even if it's only 10 or 15 people, hey, if they're 10 or 15 people, it'll be ideal customers for you, then then why not give it a go? You know, it's 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 absolutely amazing. I never thought about that. I have seen some strange podcasts, but that's a first for, <laughs> that's a first for me. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go and check it out now. I'm going to go on the platform and search for it. It's Might be good listen. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely so. There's, there's definitely an audience, you know. And, and I, I recently released um, a, 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 on my YouTube channel yeah. a lesson about how everybody's voice is an audience. So, you know, most people, what would you give? You know, what kind of tips would you give to people who don't think they've got anything to say and hold themselves back? But you've just kind of answered that, that there's an audience for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, some people are like that. Oh, I don't like the sound of my own voice. You know, and it's like when you first hear yourself back on tape recorder, but like, do I sound like that? Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, you do. You know, people listen to you speak all day, every day anyway. Um, so all you're doing is just recording a conversation, which, you know, and again, it, if you don't want to just do it on your own, get one of your colleagues in a room and just sit down and record a meeting that you might have anyway. And, you know, your customers are more likely to find that very, very useful. But most of the time they won't hear those meetings. You know, when you're just having those kind of brainstorming sessions yeah. that would be really fascinating to listen to, just stick a microphone in the middle, record it. No one's even going to know that microphone's there. Um, so, you know, I think ultimately if you want to want to sort of do a podcast, you're going to have to get over the over the sort of fear of or the fact that you're being recorded and people are going to listen back to it. Um, I think it's different for everyone, but uh you know that's just kind of what i say you know listen you, you talk to people every day every day it's no real difference to just having a face to face meeting with someone or or just kind of giving a presentation how quick do you i i, I have a and i'm going to be putting this in i have a platform for uh, therapists and coaches there's hundreds and hundreds of members on there and uh -huh. covid has changed things as we talked about people are diving onto videos and podcasts and stuff like that what's the bare minimum that someone needs to get started and how long do you think it would take someone from from that initial idea 
to get in the first episode out there? Well, I mean, it depends how motivated you are. I think that, you know, we've seen people who do it within a single day. You know, they'll have an idea. They've got, you know, yeah, you, as I said earlier, buy a microphone. That's my always my suggestion. But you don't even have to do that if you don't want to. You could record it on your phone or your computer mic and just start speaking. Hit that record button. Download a bit of free software like Audacity. Save it. Drag and drop that file to podcast.co and you're away. You know, that's it. It's not really that complicated. Um, you know, obviously... If you want to be good at it, you've got to try and sort of learn a few editing skills, perhaps put some background music in or have like a little intro. But, you know, you can kind of figure that stuff out over time. And again, you know, you know, let's talk about that, the intro, the intro and yeah. the outro. I mean, it is really when, when I started, I'm like, wow, what, what, what is all this that people have got? It kind of makes yeah. you sound like you're a real kind of radio host and stuff like yeah. that. So. <laughs> and what you say so how important really is that intro and the outro and, and how easy is it to get it done well I, I my approach is basically you know listen back to the episode uh, some people don't bother with them you know some people just get straight into it i always think it's good to tease you know in a summarized way like 30 seconds what they're going to learn or what they're going to get out of that episode so listen back to the conversation you've had pick out like three or four juicy bits and just put it together in a little script just read it and and, and put that in at the beginning i think and again, the outro should always be some kind of call to action, I think, whether that's mm. subscribe or, you know, hit this unique URL and download a free video or download a free course or whatever it might be. So you can track that that traffic's coming from the podcast, as I mentioned before. Um, but I think they're not they're not a necessity, but I think it's always good. It makes it sound a bit more polished and professional. Now, here's the, you, you mentioned there about doing like a, an intro for maybe each different episode because you can kind of summarize what's in the episode yeah. i have intros that are just a standard intro for the show so do you do you recommend to people that have a standard intro and then maybe do one per each episode just of you telling them what's coming up because yeah. I, I, i've never done that james i have to be go. honest I, this is something you've given me to think about if you think about it when you watch a tv show um normally on the tv show they'll say what happened yeah. last time or what you know the, so so i always think you know the the kind of 30 seconds you, it's like a little sales pitch it's an elevator's pitch it's here why here's why you should give me 30 minutes of your time to listen to this episode yeah. you know in in 15 20 30 seconds bang 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 in this episode you will learn x y and z and um uh, you can go back and of course record this in retrospect it doesn't have to be um, done before you actually start speaking to the guest that's the beauty of editing, right? But I always think it's a good, good thing to do. You know, it's good, it's good sales, isn't it? It's kind of teasing, you know, yeah, what, what's absolutely. coming up, really. No po podcast. Let's jump into that one because podcast.co, <clears throat> I was very lucky. I jumped in when I when I seen it when it came on to that uh, the, the the lifetime offer and stuff like that. But you have really, in such a small space of time. Mm really become a major player in the industry. I mean, you're competing with the likes of Transistor, Spreaker, Buzzsprout. I mean, I've, I've been in Buzzsprout. I, I've, I've had accounts with them. I've had yeah. accounts with Spreaker. And I have to say, guys, I cancelled them all and I moved to Podcast Yeah. And what, what has made your meteoric rise in the podcast industry so – I mean, you are standing out there as a brand yeah. big time. I think we spent, um, before we launched the product, so we launched in May, June last year, 2019, we spent probably a year before that, starting to really, before we had anything to sell, we were working on the platform in the background, a development team, but we actually started building that brand, building podcast.co, creating content, you know, in 2018. So we had a full year behind us of, of trying to elevate and build that brand and make people aware of us before we actually started selling anything. Um, you know, obviously we were in a lucky position uh, where we could, you know, we could do that. Uh, we took on some some debt financing for, from my, from my existing business. So I kind of expanded our existing team. I didn't want to take momentum away from my, my my other business. So we we hired more marketing staff. We hired another development team just to work on the podcast.co platform. And of course, it downs a bit of its experience as well. You know, as an entrepreneur, I've built many web products now over the past sort of 10 years and um you know each time we get better at it so you know you learn from from what you've done in your previous platform and how you launched that it's not just about the actual code that sits behind it it's about the user experience eg how the user kind of inter interacts with the product but it's also about the branding and the marketing and everything that else that goes along with it and i think you know as i say one of the mistakes we made with radio.co for example was 
we didn't really have any content or a website until the day we launched. We just had one of our landing pages with give us your email and we'll let you know when it's live. But actually, we should have started working on the site, working on the content strategy before yeah. we launched the product, because then you've already got an audience who you can start selling that product to. Um, so I think that's probably helped contribute towards, you know, our sort of uh, our success with podcast.co. You know, obviously, more recently as well, we've we've started innovating by by launching a kind of complementary platform, uh, which is called matchmaker.fm. And um, amazing. Yeah, yeah, as you, you touched on it briefly before. So, yeah. you know, again, it's it's about looking at opportunities in a specific market that, you know, maybe uh, gaps that there are. Thing is, there are lots of podcast hosts, as you mentioned. It's quite hard really to differentiate between them. I think one of the ways we're better is our user experience is, is nicer. Our customer support is very good. Um, and some of those platforms are really old and ugly and hard to use. You know, they haven't really changed for like 15 years. And oh, that's beautiful. The other thing I'm thinking, this is podcasting, you know, is brilliant for authors. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm looking to do is, is bring podcast.com. I'm actually building a SaaS app for authors at the moment, a marketing app, and I want to bring Podcast Co into that app. Yeah. So that's, that, that's big for authors. So what's the future for you guys? What are you looking for, you know, two or three years ahead? What's, what's, What's exciting developments is coming up for you guys? Well, with, with podcast.co, one of the things we've just launched is private feeds, which is becoming really popular, especially with bigger corporations. So basically the ability to have podcasts that are sort of hidden from public. Um, so you can give users, different users access to them. Um, so we're working with some big brands already. They want to basically have podcasts used for internal communication. So think about companies that have got you know offices all around the world, et cetera. Um, but yeah. obviously, you don't want the general public being able to listen. So that's one of the things we've just launched. Um, we've got a few other things on the roadmap with podcast.co. Um, in terms of matchmaker, we are about to roll out video profiles. So just making the platform more engaging with video. Um, oh, really? Yeah. One of the things that we want to do really is 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 own the whole process. So at the moment, you know, there's so many different tools you have to rely on to schedule, record a podcast. So think about, you know, having that process all all done within one platform. That's kind of like where we're going to be heading next year. Um, wow. So you're going to be bringing up recording as well. Yeah. That's what we're hoping to do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, bye, 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 bye goes my Zencaster account. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, and so and the other, one of the other things is, um, and opening up to agencies. So we're having a lot of inquiries at the moment from people who are maybe PR companies or marketing agencies, and they represent lots of individuals and they basically want a, a sort of one, one account. I do, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like you probably do with different authors or whatever, different yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, entrepreneurs. So, so adding kind of agency functionality to, to allow people to uh, sort of control their clients' accounts as well. So that's kind of a nice summary of what we've got coming up without going to too that's much. That's brilliant. And like, listen, so people that are listening, because this is we're, we're going to try and promote this far and wide in, in the different platforms that I own as well. Mm. Um, you've got a you've got a course, right? So we want to tell people to go to that course because you've got a course that basically kind of handholds you through that whole process yep. of setting up and everything. Tell them about that. So if you go to podcast.co slash crash course. It's a sort of four part video series, which sort of demystifies the technical aspects of podcasting and really just gives you some pointers to get started as quickly as possible. Um, if you want a bit more detail, we also have a free guide called the podcast.co blueprint, which if you go to podcast.co slash blueprint, again, completely free download. It's awesome. I've got grab, it. Grab, grab a copy of that and that will talk you through what sort of equipment you can buy, different, different levels, different ranges of budgets. Um, and again, going to talk, sort of talking about how to concept your podcast, how to write a script, um, and really just goes into just as much detail as possible about you know getting started. Before we finish, I wanted to, I wanted to bring up something else because I, and I recommend everybody go and do that. But a lot of people, there's a lot of talk about advertising on your podcast. Is mm -hmm. is it? Do you think it's it's a good thing for people? I've had people say, "Come on, my podcast is only going to cost you a hundred dollars to be on the podcast." Do you think that's a good thing? A bad thing? Or do you see you going more into from podcast.co? Do you think you will move into an advertising model where you can actually have drops and stuff in the middle of the podcast for ad adverts? Part of the problem with the 30 second spot model at the moment in the industry is it's very, very low paid. Unless you have hundreds of thousands of downloads, you really mm -hmm. struggle to make any money. If you've got a couple of thousand downloads, 
you're probably better off monetizing it through other mediums. So whether that is using it as a tool to promote products or services that you have as a business, selling other yeah. people's products or services as, as an affiliate, or finally, um, you know, trying to get your users to support you. If you're talking about something that's maybe not business related, you know, patron services like that, relying on user supported um, subscriptions. And you have that. You guys have that within yeah. podcast. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can add your patron link. You can add a PayPal link in there. <laughs> Um, and you know, again, with our private podcast thing, you can have potentially a podcast, which is just accessible to members who are paying a, a, a premium fee. So that's kind of quite a common model as well. You have your public facing podcast. And if you want bonus content, you can subscribe and get access to a sort of premium one. Um, again, you can, you can do that with podcast.co really simply. So, you know, that's the thing. I think the advertising isn't yet really good unless you have huge, huge numbers, um, but then also there are plenty of podcasters, you know, likewise, as I said, if you've, if you've got a real good niche and you can prove to a potential sponsor that your audience are really engaged and they're really relevant to a specific industry, you can, yeah. you can always broker a direct sponsorship deal and that can actually be quite lucrative. And there's plenty of podcasters who have done that very successfully. It just, it's just about knowing your audience and being able to demonstrate that your audience is who they, you think they are basically to, to that sponsor. That's awesome. James, final thoughts. What is your biggest uh, tip that you can give people who are either want to start a podcast or, you know, want to jump into it? And obviously, podcast.co, where they can go and join up and sign up and yep. how much it costs. Well, podcast.co, go and check it out. You can have a free trial on there. Plans start from $29 a month. If you're thinking about starting a podcast, perhaps you're not ready to take the plunge of starting your own. I think being a guest on other people's podcasts is a really great way of getting some experience. Uh, so go and check out matchmaker.fm. You can register as a guest um, and then find podcasts that are looking for people who are, have expertise, which could be any area at all, really. And that's completely free to join. James, I want to thank you for being on Awareness in Action today. This has been absolutely awesome. I think we've covered an awful lot of information yeah. um, that can definitely help people make a decision. And let me just tell you, one final thought, guys, from me, podcast.co. I've used a lot of platforms. It is absolutely freaking awesome. It is easy. It is beautiful. Um, jump on board. Go and download the free course. You will learn an awful lot. It's a very low-cost medium for advertising. And this has been Jock here on Awareness in Action. And this is awesome for coaches, lawyers, any business at all. James, thank you for being with me and I look forward to chatting to you again. Yeah, really appreciate you having me, Jock. Thanks for the opportunity.